Around 15% of stroke survivors continue to experience incontinence a year after their stroke. And incontinence just means a loss of bowel or bladder control. It is a common but unwelcome and embarrassing side effect. And while it usually clears up in those early weeks after a stroke, it doesn't always. So if you or someone you love is dealing with incontinence after a stroke, today we're gonna to talk about why it happens and what you can do about it. When a stroke happens, part of the brain is without oxygen for some period of time. And that's very important because our brains rely on oxygen to function. So when there's some type of brain injury or cell death in the brain, the functions that that part of the brain controls can become disrupted because the brain can't successfully communicate with the body. And that includes bladder and bowel functioning. This results in what's called a neurogenic bladder or bowel, and sometimes both. This also can happen with other injuries or diseases that affect the nervous system, like spina bifida, multiple sclerosis, or Parkinson's disease. So what happens with a neurogenic bladder or bowel? Well, just like we can see muscle tone changes in your arms or legs after a stroke, we can also see those changes in the muscles in and around your bladder and bowels. And it can look like overactive muscle tone, spasticity, or underactive muscle tone, placidity. And this can lead to a few different outcomes, which include an overactive bladder and bowels, poor control over sphincter muscles, and urinary retention, aka the inability to empty your bladder. If you have a neurogenic bladder, you'll likely see one or multiple of these symptoms, which include frequent urination during the day or at night, may have a feeling of constant wetness um, or an inability to completely empty out your bladder. You may experience urinary leakage, uh, painful urination, a history of multiple urinary tract infections, the feeling that you urgently need to go, but when you sit down, you can't actually produce anything, or when you do go, maybe you have a very slow stream of urine. Symptoms of a neurogenic bowel or bowel incontinence include a lack of control over bowel movements, uh, frequent bowel movements, or a lack of bowel movements, and constipation. While there are specific medications, injections, and surgeries that can be helpful in treating incontinence and should be something that you talk with your doctor about, today I'm gonna to be talking with you about strategies that you can try at home. The first strategy is to make some lifestyle changes with nutrition. For someone with an overactive bowel or bladder, you may wanna think about avoiding caffeine, alcohol, carbonated beverages, foods that are really sugary and drinks that are really sugary, spicy foods, and foods that are very acidic. All of those can irritate bowel and bladder and cause more frequent trips to the bathroom. Now for constipation, you wanna include more high fiber foods into your diet and avoid really processed foods and especially processed meats as those can lead to more complications with constipation. Strategy two is bladder and bowel retraining. And this involves setting up a timed schedule of when you will go to the bathroom. This is particularly helpful for folks who have either um, bladder or bowel urgency or frequency. And it's not very romantic, but it can be very effective. And the goal is to retrain your bowel and your bladder to have more extended time periods between bathroom visits. So to give you an example, perhaps you can only tolerate going an hour in between bathroom visits and you just get that urgency every hour that you've gotta go. So what you would do with a bladder or bowel retraining schedule is try to slowly extend that time period. So maybe you would say, okay, I'm gonna to try to go an hour and 10 minutes, an hour and a half in between my bathroom visits. And you're slowly going to extend that time up to three or four hours, depending on what your goals are. Strategy three is using relaxation techniques. These are very helpful for people who experience that urgency and frequency related incontinence. And you can actually use this strategy in conjunction with the bladder and bowel retraining program. So for example, let's say that you immediately have the thought that I urgently have to pee or poop and I cannot wait. I challenge you, take a deep breath, then take a few more, 
as you take some deep breaths, see if you can guide your thoughts away from that urgency and onto just relaxing your body. You can also go through some muscle relaxation where if you're holding a lot of stress in your jaw, just try to relax it. Try to relax your shoulders down if you hold a lot of stress there. Now, if doing some of those strategies is too quiet for you and you can't ignore that urgency little voice in your head, you can try putting on a one or two minute guided meditation. Now, I like to use Insight Timer. It's one of my favorite apps, um, not sponsored, just love it. Um, because it's also free and they have really great content. So you could pop one of those on and utilizing any of those relaxation strategies can hopefully help to distract you enough and relax you enough to get away from the all consuming urgency and frequency thoughts. Strategy number four is doing pelvic floor exercises. Now you've probably heard of Kegels before, but pelvic floor exercises are much more than that. And they're not just for people who have had babies. They're for anyone who deals with pelvic floor muscle weakness or incontinence. Now typically they're prescribed for someone who has stress incontinence, which means that there's um, leakage when there is some type of physical stress like a cough, sneeze, or other vigorous activity. But they can be helpful for stroke survivors as well because they're typically related to pelvic floor muscle weakness. And we can see weakness in those muscles just like we see weakness in arms or legs after a stroke. A general way to start practicing these exercises is to use the muscles that you would to stop a stream of urine or to stop from passing gas. You would hold that for a few seconds, relax, and then repeat. You would also want to try not to squeeze your abs or your butt muscles while you're doing that because then you're not really targeting the right muscles. It can be hard to get exactly right. But a good place to start is try those exercises out laying down because you're gonna have less impact of gravity than you would if you were sitting or standing. And remember that with any strengthening exercises, it takes time to see results. All right, everyone, that's it for today. As always, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below if you would like to sign up for my email list, which gets you access to free stroke recovery tips and motivational emails, as well as a free copy of my ebook, The Stroke Recovery Pocket Guide. And if you find value in what we do here at Post Stroke, please consider donating, either via our PayPal for a one-time donation or by becoming a Patreon member, where in exchange for a monthly donation, you get access to all sorts of cool perks like social media shoutouts and behind the scenes content. And on that note, I actually have a YouTube shout out for someone in our Empower level. Thank you so much, Doug C. We can't do what we do without you. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.